Talal, this is a major approval from Washington. We're happy you're here to explain it for us. What does this deal mean for G42 at a strategic level? Well, first of all, thank you, Dan, for having me. Um, so this approval doesn't change our strategy. It just accelerates what we've been working on and executing for years in building national scale AI infrastructure with our trusted US partners and providing low latency environments for advanced inference and preserving sovereignty over critical data sets, anchoring the growth that we are building on clean energy and expanding global compute capacity. So we're entering this phase where uh, energy and intelligence are converging and where breakthroughs that once took decades are now compressed in time because we're running them on non-biological substrates. So we're very excited about uh, what's to come. Talal, this is obviously a major development for G42, but also for the UAE's more broader AI ambitions. The question now, though, is this. How quickly do you expect these NVIDIA chips to actually be deployed across your platforms, and what's the timeline on the arrival here? So we've been building on a daily basis, three shifts a day, ever since President Trump's visit on May 15th. And we're well on our way to having the first 200 megawatts of the anchor one gigawatt Stargate UAE with OpenAI done in 2026, building towards that one gigawatt and then further to the five gigawatt uh, US UAE AI campus. So we're very excited and moving at breakneck speed at the moment. Okay, this US approval also comes with what Washington has called rigorous security and reporting requirements. So what does that actually look like in practice for G42? So we've been operating U.S. regulated technologies for years now here in the UAE. We have what we've designed uh, as a gold standard called the regulated technology environment, which really helps us, uh, you know, ensure that we protect and preserve the security imperatives of this consequential technology. It's very similar to when you look at nuclear technology and the peaceful nuclear energy program we have and the one to three agreement that provides the right safeguards for those types of consequential technologies. And so we have a combination of both physical security and logical security to prevent the risks that are anticipated and ensure that this technology can be applied for good. This was the primary concern for the previous U.S. administration, of course. Technology transfer has been a really key issue, particularly to the Gulf capital. So now that we have seen this approval, I want to understand exactly what it means for the business. And just to ask again, does this ultimately impact how and where you can use these chips? And what type of restrictions are actually in place that will impact how G42 can use this advanced U.S. technology? So I think when we look at how we're trying to enable uh, the AI native society that we're building here in the UAE, that needs to be underpinned by digital infrastructure. We refer to this in G42 as the intelligence grid. And to be able to provide equitable intelligence to the world, it's important that we have that digital infrastructure and are able to leverage the comparative and competitive advantages that the UAE has. Uh, be it from the energy or be it the geographic centricity that allows for late, low latency connectivity to really span half the world's population in terms of what we could um, also serve from the UAE. So we're looking to be a force multiplier in being able to propagate responsibly this type of technology and ensure equitable access to AI to, to avoid the digital divide. It's interesting as well, Talal, because uh, G42 has also said that it's confident it can meet these compliance obligations set out by the Commerce Department. Can you expand on that for me? What compliance obligations specifically does that refer to? So there are several uh, uh, security imperatives that the U.S. government has on technologies that are of this type of consequence. So one is physical security and the different types of parameters to avoid the risks of diversion. So that's one that we've been able to lock down through our regulated technology environment. The other is a multi-layered approach to cybersecurity and logical uh, security. So that ensures that the access is controlled to only those who are supposed to be able to get access and that are vetted. Uh, um, customers that have uh, a, a reason to use that compute and uh, are using it to do things like healthcare or education or government services and the like. So we're very particular about how we apply this compute and who we deploy it to.
Indeed, and as I mentioned earlier, this is such a significant unlock for the UAE and for G42. Just to go back to something that you mentioned earlier with regards to uh, how you will ultimately be using this technology, you said that this uh, approval will accelerate the Stargate UAE project with OpenAI. That was uh, a landmark announcement made during uh, President Trump's visit to the region earlier this year. How do these new chips ultimately change the timeline and the scale of that work? Still lots of questions about exactly how big Stargate is going to be, what it's going to cost, and what it's going to do. Yeah, so look, at G42, our KPI is GDP. So we're in the business of digital nation building, and everything we deploy, whether it's compute, data centers, uh, sovereign cloud, the genomics platforms, geospatial systems, it's all built at national scale because that's what lifts productivity across the economy. And uh, like every major era had um, different types of backbones, steam, the steam era had railways, the industrial era had electricity, digital era had AI, and now we're building the intelligence grid to help propagate that technology and enable. So we're very bullish about uh, what's to come, especially when you look at the different types of workloads that people are uh, uh, gravitating towards, whether it's agentic AI workflows or multimodality with voice and video, that's very compute intensive and it's gonna require a lot more compute cycles in the global market. And so we're bringing that to bear with the energy infrastructure that we're able to apply towards that here in the UAE. And this US UAE, UAE AI campus is uh, being touted, being positioned as a five gigawatt regional hub. It is huge. Can you put a figure on what the UAE is actually investing to make that happen? Well, it's, it's uh, you know, when you look at a gigawatt of AI compute, if you consider Shell and Core and the um, uh, liquid cooling required and the network design for that type of uh, deployment, and then also obviously the chips themselves, on the per gigawatt level, it's roughly anywhere between 30 and $50 billion when you also include power generation. So it's a pretty massive amount of investment that's required. And that's why no one company or one country can do this on their own, especially when you need hundreds of gigawatts globally to be able to provide equitable access to intelligence. So we work very closely with partners and uh, we're very lucky that uh, partners like Microsoft have chosen to double down their investments here in the UAE. Uh, OpenAI on the Stargate UAE uh, opportunity is also uh, looking at the UAE as a node, uh, you know, an inferencing super node perhaps uh, for uh, propagation of their model to a greater part of the world. since. This will serve a 3,200 kilometer radius in a very low latency envelope. So we're uh, quite excited about what's to come. I spoke with the president of Microsoft recently about the regional AI race as well. And it's interesting because the UAE and Saudi Arabia are now effectively competing head to head for AI scale and US technology and investment. Of course, what we've also seen off the back of President Trump's visit is uh, rather uh, the Crown Prince's visit to Washington DC with President Trump is humane in Saudi Arabia also receiving these identical chips. So what does that mean for G42? How are you reading the regional AI race and what's G42's real competitive edge if humane has exactly the same technology in Saudi Arabia? So it's natural for people to compare regional initiatives, but from our perspective, this isn't really a race. Uh, the UAE committed early and built strong international partnerships and invested steadily, which is why we have mature deployments operating today between the US, Europe, and here in the UAE. What Saudi Arabia is doing is uh, something admirable. I think every other country in the world should be looking at an AI strategy and uh, how it could help propagate AI in a responsible fashion within their uh, communities. In our case, G42 is a global company that happens to have been born and headquartered in the UAE. So we're continuing to execute on our roadmap and vision and expand our geographic footprint to be able to provide that equitable, equitable access to intelligence with our U.S. partners in our global AI infrastructure build-out.